don't know the power of the dark side. But you know, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times. If one only remembers to turn on the light. The beacons of Minas City! The beacons are lit! Night gathers, and now my watch begins, but shall not end until my death. Remember it well, then, this night. For in those memories, we live on. Do not cite the deep magic to me, witch. I was there when it was written. Call the banners. All of them, my lord. They've all sworn to defend my father, have they not? They yeah. have. Now we'll see what the words are worth. But take heart. Look around. You're not in this fight alone. We face our enemy together. And together, we will defeat them. By all that you hold dear on this good earth, I bid you stand! Men of the West! What's up, everybody? How's everyone doing tonight? John Graver's in the chat. Gray Pilgrim with the ever lovely three logo emojis. Uh, Crimson Law, Matuine, what is up? And RG Energy, how are you doing, everybody? So, a couple of people may have noticed that uh, the name of the stream has changed a little bit. Uh, we were going to, what's up, Bobby? How are you doing? We were going to talk about a certain documentary. Uh, but I've been advised not to. Um, I'm going to wait until it's a little safer channel-wise to talk about that. There's a lot I want to talk about with it, but I don't think it is, uh, let's say, safe at the moment to talk about. A um, lot of uh, a lot of bigger people are getting in trouble for talking about it, so. I'm going to try to fly under the radar and not let YouTube find me. So, first thing I want to say is uh, I, I want to apologize to everyone. I have not done nearly half of what I should have been doing. A uh, whole lot of videos that should have come out that haven't come out. Uh, I've got several recorded. They'll start coming out uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, House of Dragon reaction trailer reactions will be out tomorrow. Um I've got one on, ooh, what is it? On the Alien Romulus trailer. That'll come out Friday. Um, yes, Pilgrim, even the advisor has to be advised. Otherwise, he doesn't know everything. He doesn't just know everything just because he exists. He has to learn and read. That's what makes him an advisor. That's what makes him wise. Um, me, I am not wise. There are better people to be wise for me. Uh, so the good thing is that part of this, part of my, let's call it lack of content, was I was a little um, uh, disheartened, let's say, with uh, where I was with jobs and everything. Uh, but I'm feeling really good. I've got, I had a really good interview yesterday. Uh, I may be assuming... And obviously, I need to measure my expectations. But assuming everything goes well, uh, we're going to go dark for a week or two. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to be in a new uh, place in a new city. So it's going to be fun. Um, but again, knock on wood. Not Don't want to risk anything happening. Uh, so let's see. Let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about this pirate shit. So... I don't know, I don't I don't know about y'all, but I really like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Obviously, I like pirates. You know, I do the history of pirates thing with Jay, and that's not just that's because I actually enjoy it, not because for some stupid YouTube reason I actually really enjoy learning about these people and talking about it. And next Monday, we will be discussing the greatest Scottish pirate according to the English, 
John Paul Jones, and according to us, a real American hero. So stay tuned. Um, but we have uh, we got some news from Jerry Bruckheimer, who for a long time I kind of thought was I don't, I'm not sure I want to say st- uh, was a stand up person, but he seemed to at least be kind of on the right side of things. But this is annoying because you know let's uh, let's pull this up here. Pirates of the Caribbean producer. Confirms franchise is getting a re- reboot, a reboot, not a continuation, a reboot with a sixth movie. And what's so telling is this quote, so they don't have to wait for certain actors. And what's annoying about that is, so if you're rebooting it, what, you, what you're saying is you are restarting the story. Not, necessar- not necessarily that you're going to tell the same story you know, again or in a new way or anything like that, but you're just, they don't exist anymore. So you are removing the number one selling point of Pirates of the Caribbean, and that was Captain Jack Sparrow. And actually beyond that, it was Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow. So not only do we not care that y'all were wrong, you weren't mistaken, you were wrong. You fired a guy. Well, okay, so let me rewind here. Um, Once again, Johnny Depp, as far as I remember, was not fired from Pirate 6. He was, because when all that stuff was going down, Pirate 6 hadn't started. There was no, no one was like working on it. He just wasn't formula, you know, off a contract and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little different. Whereas with uh, Warner, he was genuinely fired from, uh, what do you call it, um, the third Fantastic Beast movie, which was really dumb. But what's annoying about this is he's he's literally the face of Pirates of the Caribbean. Disney's made, I think it's like $1.6 billion off of him. People aren't going to Pirates of the Caribbean like, we didn't go see uh, Pirates 2 because Elizabeth Swan was in it or uh, William Turner was in it. We went to see it because Johnny Depp was in it. Um, so not having him in it or or saying this, saying that you, you're rebooting it so you don't have to wait for, and we all know who they're talking about. They're not talking about fucking uh, uh, Kira Knightley or uh, what's his name, um, Orlando Bloom. They're talking about Johnny Depp, and so to sit there and kind of put him on blast and say he's the reason that they're rebooting it instead of continuing it is bullshit. Let's go through this. Um, Brookheimer initially said, "Because with Top Gun, you have an actor who's iconic and brilliant." And how many movies he does before he does Top Gun? I could I can't tell you. But we're gonna reboot Pirates so that it's easier to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. If they had d- tried to do Top Gun Maverick without Tom Cruise, it I think you're looking at like a hundred and twenty million dollars. You're looking at a whole bunch of videos on the internet. Why would you do this stupid thing? I mean, you're looking. You're basically looking at the same reception the Marvels got. It would be a failure, and to sit there and say that it's basically the same instance with uh, pirates, I think, is the height of uh, hubris. Bruckheimer isn't one made these movies. Giant depots. The three, honestly, the three of them together is what really made the movie. Uh, at least the first one for me. Um, Pilgrim says pirates one through three is awesome. Yes, so. And that's the thing, you know, the first three Pirates movies are really good. The fourth one's like, mm, okay, sure. Uh, the fifth one is better than the fourth one. It definitely is. Um, Rogue says, I like the first two Pirates movies. So, Rogue, did you not like the third one? Uh, Maria, what's up? I hope you're having a good day. Uh, absolutely. Depp is Captain Jack. Yep. 
Yeah, but so that's that's the problem, Maria. Um, I don't think <clears throat> I don't think they will be doing Captain Jack. Rumor is that it will be set decades prior or decades after. Yeah, I so I saw the same thing, but that's what's BS about this. You can't do a Pirates. The, it's kind of it, sorry. It is the same thing as making something that's called Star Wars without a lightsaber in it or the Force or uh, I'm trying to think of other things. Um, a Top Gun movie without Maverick or a Lord of the Rings thing without a connection to Lord of the Rings. Um, suddenly every franchise in my head is gone. But it's like making a Spider-Man movie without Spider-Man. Hmm. I wonder how that worked for him. I mean, I already told you I was, gonna, I was doing this one solo. Calm down, bro. Um, ah, Rogue, you didn't see the third one. You should definitely see the third one. It's a good one. It's a really good movie. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't really care about what the, uh, <clears throat> what the Disney guy said. But I do, I do have to say this. I do like that. Apparently... Pipes the Caribbean is still a priority for them because, as I've said before, and you know, I've heard other people say it, uh, Pipes the Caribbean is the number one original non animated franchise that Disney owns. <clears throat> they bought Star Wars, they bought Marvel, uh, Frozen is animated. Pirates is the most successful thing they made by themselves and in live action, and so. The fact that we've been, I mean, when did the last one come out? Um, Pirates 5 came out in 2017. So, yeah, the fact that it's been seven years since the last one came out is just ridiculous. Like, why have we waited so long? It is too bad Jeff, Jeffrey Rush probably won't be in it. I really enjoyed Barbosa's character. And Rush is a really good actor. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Dami, you, you got to chill out, man. <laughs> You're playing Helldivers, man. Go liberate the galaxy. You're doing a fine job over there. So I so Pilgrim, I totally get what you're saying about this. I I think what they realized with uh, four is that it wasn't as good without William and uh, um, Elizabeth in the movie, and so they needed to find a way to get them back. But they can't get them back with, with William still tied to the um, uh, what's it called. Flying Dutchman, that's what it's called. Uh, so they can't get him back with William still tied to the Flying Dutchman. So they got to find a way to undo that. And I think that was the purpose of the fifth one. They needed to bring to get it so they could bring everyone back together, so they can continue they continue the story, do a new story, however they decide to do it. But yeah, again, it's fucking dumb to do this without Giant Depp. Okay. Um, Rogue says I will have to watch it. You really should. Um, and honestly, dude, I'd say watch all of them. Uh, I know you know four is going to be going to be kind of dumb. Uh, it's an interesting take on Edward Teach with Blackbeard. Um, and it's kind of interesting how they use kind of the magic in uh, with Blackbeard and the sails and all that. It's interesting, uh, but. I think you'll find five much better. Um, Javier Bardin. 
that how you say his name? Yeah, Harvey Javier Bardem. He he does a uh, much better villain than uh, Edward Teach. So, Maria, the problem with this is I'm not really saying it's Jerry Bruckheimer's fault. It's Jerry Bruckheimer's fault for not going to bat for Johnny. If Jerry Bruckheimer would be an executive producer on this, if he really wanted him insurable, he could make him insurable. The same way that uh, what's-his-name got uh, uh, RDJ insurable for Iron Man. They took it weeks at a time, remember? That's how they did the insurance on him then. So they could he Jerry could get that done on here, or Jerry could fund it himself. Jerry has made millions of dollars. Johnny could also fund it himself. But the other thing is that if this is true, if this statement is true, then how did Johnny get Bond for the last Pirates movie, 2017, filmed in 2016, 2015? How did he get Bond for Uh, Grindelwald, yeah, he's in, he, he was going to be in Grindelwald. So how, how did he get bond for that? How did he get bond for murder of the Orient Express or the other, uh, the, the second, um, what was the second? No. So Dumbledore's army. Okay. Yeah. So Dumbledore's army comes out in 2019, I think, um, he was gonna ha- he was gonna be in that, which means he was bonded on that. How did he get it on that? I don't think this is a drugs issue. I think this is just uh, they're not doing what he wants. Remember, he did that interview. Uh, oh, I can't ever remember when it was. It was like th- two years ago, I think it was, where he kind of uh, insinuated that some of the stuff he wanted from Disney and Warner, he wasn't getting for. Uh, in order to come back for these movies. Um, yes, Pilgrim, Dumbledore's Army. Yeah, remember, he was going to be in Dumbledore's Army, and uh, then they fired him when the Sun article came out. But that means he had bonding in uh, that thing uh, when they were filming it. Well, Maria, I don't read people, so I don't know. Um, but let's talk about this. I'm sure Maria's going to yell me, yell at me about this too. Um, let's talk about uh, stupid actresses. Olivia Coleman. I love Olivia Coleman. She has been in so many things that I have enjoyed. I think my number one thing for uh, Olivia Coleman is probably Broadchurch. Really loved her in Broadchurch. She was excellent in a British show called Peep Show. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should. It's very good. Um, hang on one second. I need to take a sip of something. But Olivia Coleman is reigniting this whole gender pay gap in Hollywood thing with this uh, with this comment of hers. And I, I'm just, I'm not real. Um, where she says, if I was Oliver Coleman, I'd be earning an F ton more. So my problem with this is let's look at what she has done lately. Obviously she is, she was, in one of the biggest TV shows of, let's say, the last five years. The Crown, though I'm not a huge fan, is clearly a very successful TV show. So, actually, I'm going to put a little investigative hat on here. Um, And how much did Coleman make on The Crown? So let's see. Um, uh, 
Uh, so Olivia Coleman and Tobias Menzies. So obviously uh, Olivia played Queen Elizabeth and Tobias played, um, what's his name? Prince Philip. Uh, so this article, uh, so this article doesn't tell us. Okay. We know that. Claire Foy made forty thousand an episode, and Matt Smith made fifty-two thousand an episode. So let's let's take that. Let's take uh, that little bit there. Um, so you have the uh, female actress making less than the male actress. The show is about Claire Foy at this point. So shouldn't she make more? No, because Matt Smith is a bigger actor at the time. It's the same thing with when, um, uh, what's the, uh, what's the, what's the guy's name? Uh, remember, what was that movie? All the Money in the World with, uh, not Matt Damon, the other one, Mark Wahlberg, um, and, Michelle Williams, Christopher Plummer, and Mark Wahlberg. So this was one of those movies that originally starred Kevin Spacey as the older uh, Getty. Uh, this was the movie that was about the Paul, the Getty kid that was kidnapped and then ransomed. Um, Mark Wahlberg played uh, John Paul Getty II. And... What's his name? Wow, I can't remember his name. Hang on. Uh, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey was playing Gene Paul uh, Getty. And when he got accused and all that stuff came out, they fired him. They brought in Christopher Plummer to uh, play him. And they had to do a whole bunch of reshoots. They, I'm pretty sure they almost had to reshoot the entire movie. And Mark Wahlberg was paid, I believe, about a million dollars to come do reshoots. Uh, Michelle Williams was paid, I'm going to get the number wrong, but it was much smaller. It was like 10 grand. It, what, it was, there was a huge disparity. And the, uh, the thing that came out about that was that... Uh, why was the male actor getting paid more than the female actor when they're in a similar amount of time on the show, on the movie and all that stuff. And it was because Mark Wahlberg had to cancel shoots for a movie he was doing. Michelle Williams didn't. And Mark Wahlberg was the highest paid actor of like the last two years. He was the reason people were going to go watch that movie, not Michelle Williams. And so when you see things like this, like uh, this person should be, be, be Sorry, this person should be getting paid the same amount as this person because they're doing the same amount of work. That's not true. This person has a better negotiating standpoint. It's kind of like when you look at the WNBA versus the NBA. The WNBA players make less than the, w than the NBA players because the NBA players have a better uh, union. They have a be they have a stronger negotiating standpoint. They can sit there and say billions of dollars come to our league. So we, and they come here to watch us. They don't come here to watch the coach for the most time. I think some people go to watch some of the reactions of the coaches. But the WNBA does not bring in the same amount of money. In fact, as I'm sure a lot of people know, uh, the WNBA is subsidized by the NBA. And they, uh, I read something the other day about them apparently voting to become their own thing unsubsidized by the NBA. That's going to go over very well. Um, let me. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. So I let me answer Maria's question real quick. Uh, the Crown started in 2016, and uh, you we can talk about filmography all we want. Claire Foy has been in some incredible things. She is a very good actress, but but uh, Matt Smith was coming off of the number one show in Britain. He was the most popular face on British television. So he got paid more money. It was a coup that Netflix was able to get him to leave the doc to leave Doctor Who. It was huge. So that's why he got paid more money. Claire Foy, as far as I can tell, didn't have to leave anything. Starts in 2016. She stopped playing Anne Boleyn in Wolf Hall. Matt Smith stopped playing the doctor in Doctor Who. There's a huge difference in those two roles. I mean, look at David Tennant. David Tennant left the doctor and all of a sudden had huge bargaining power on everything because he could walk into a studio and say, hi, I was the doctor on the most popular show in our country. Every People are going to come watch the show. It's a huge bargaining point. It's kind of like, it's the same thing that a lot, same thing Timothy Chalamet can do it now, Timothy Chalamet, and he's he's just done it. He's got a contract with Warner where he, he gets a first look, uh, a first look deal and a producing credit for uh, bringing in movies. I don't like the guy. I don't think he's that great of an actor, but there's no denying the fact that his name has a certain cachet to it now. Um. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I have not paid attention to the chat at all. I'm sorry. Hang on a second, guys. Let me... Uh, I, gotta roll, I gotta scroll up. Well, what's up, Ronnie? Thank you for coming in. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're enjoying the well, actually. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's okay. We talked about that. Yeah, there you go, Ronnie. Enjoying it. Uh, yes, we talked about that. Talked about that. Um, <laughs> Pilgrim, the secret of Dumbledore. That's funny. Right. Uh, <laughs> Well, then become Oliver Coleman and see what happens. She'd be very, or sorry, he'd be very unhappy. I wish they'd lower the basket. Honestly, honestly, um, so at the beginning of the college of the women's college basketball season, South Carolina had a player that actually did dunk and it, it was all over uh, sports, social media for probably about three or four days. I do think having women dunking and stuff would improve the WNBA. Uh, let's see. What's up, Jimbo. Uh, let's see. That's a show you like, right? I didn't. That's the stretch part there. What does that have to do with number of films, number of TV shows, or money made on those four projects? So, it. Uh, I think you are talking about when I was talking about um, Doctor Who, him coming off of Doctor Who versus uh, her coming off of, uh, I think it was called Wolf Hall. Um, it's subjectiveness absolutely drives what you're able to command on screen or in a salary. If experience is not always the thing for, I'll give you an example experience wise, the job that I'm hoping to get next week, uh, they're going to pay me on the low end of their salary range because I don't have a lot of experience doing it. But if I had, if my last name was, so I'm, I'm hoping to do real estate. So if my last name was Mungo, 
Mungo is a big house maker in the uh, in the southeast. If my last name was Mungo, they'd pay me a lot more because I would bring in a lot of business. So that's where the subjectiveness comes in. Matt Smith brings in more eyes in 2016 than Claire Voy does. It's it's just a fact. More people watch or were watched Doctor Who than they did Wolf Hall. Or uh Upstairs, downstairs. Honestly, I'm looking at her. What are we talking about, Maria? I'm looking at her thing, and the only uh, thing that made that has made her anything is the crown. How many people watched a very British scandal or First Man? First Man was terrible. Nine episodes of Upstairs Downstairs. Claire Voy does not does not bring nearly the cachet that Matt Smith does. Okay, let's move on. Uh, good point. The NBA also fill stadiums. Yes, they do. Yep. These genders are always skewed for. Uh, okay, that's towards Marvel. Yep. Nightwatch. Nightwatch, uh, a TV movie. I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm going to move on. I feel like I'm attacking Maria, and I'm really not trying to. Um, but I think uh, I think six episodes in a TV miniseries and a TV movie does not even come close to Doctor Who. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on, guys. Okay. Um, let's... What did I? Ch- I changed it to video games instead of. Uh, what's up, Wicked? How you doing? Um. Let's uh, let's all yell at somebody. Now, there's always there's always one person that's very easy to yell at right now. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of people are going to go. Who who's he going to talk about? Joe Biden? Going to talk about Donald Trump? No, I'm going to talk about the dumbest author on the freaking planet, George R. R. Martin. George, who is on, let's get, uh, let's get the count. Hang on, day since Dance with Dragons, it has been four thousand six. 4,637 days since the Dance of Dragons came out. That's 12 years, 8 months, and 9 days. Almost 13 years. But, but, it's okay, guys. Because he's got a new Dark Winds book coming out. Yay! The comic book nobody reads. And he's working on uh, uh, a another TV show. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about these in a little bit. Don't worry, guys. We're we're one hundred percent gonna talk about them. Uh, where is that? So this is the Dark Winds. He's got, wild cards. He's got coming out. The Sleeper Awakens. Don't really, really don't give a shit. I don't know anybody that reads wild cards. But where is this? Is this it? Um, yeah, that's what it is. So here we go. Meanwhile, we are moving ahead with the third season of Dark Winds, which will start shooting this week in Santa Fe. That is... So next week. 
Oh, no, no, that's this week. Yeah. So this week, it'll start shooting in Santa Fe. So he's writing scripts for this instead of uh, he's writing scripts instead of writing Once a Winter. Good to know. He really doesn't give a shit, does he? He really couldn't give two shits about the fans that actually, the majority of his fans, the people that buy his other stuff just so that he'll stop talking about it so that we'll freaking get the book. He just doesn't care. But at least we have House of Dragon Season 2, which had two trailers come out. Let's talk about the black trip. Okay. So, just so that I don't get, like, stream banned. Okay. Um... Uh, okay, uh, guys, all right, let's, uh, let's move on from men versus women. No one, no one has an opinion on this thing that is going to sway anyone else's opinion. We all think a certain way about this whole, uh, Equality stuff. There's no reason to yell at each other in the chat. Come on, guys. We're better than this. Okay. My father chose me, his firstborn child, to succeed him. He held to his decision until death. And yet, Alison's son sits my throne. I mean to fight this war and win it. The realm will soon tear itself apart. If men do not remember the oath sworn to King Viserys and to his rightful heir. The High Towers are marching. You must crush this beast at its head. Our terms are very simple. Renounce the false king and bend the knee to the king. Or your house burns. And the desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten. Fuck We're not even remember what began the war in the first place. We fight for our queen! You feel what I've begun? I love that. I tell you what I really like, and if anyone knows, I saw Sundowners in the chat. If you know where it is, uh, I please let me know. But I want to find uh, like a metal version of these crests that I could like hang on the wall because that would be fucking awesome. All right, let's talk about this a little bit. I'm not going to go into huge detail. I've got videos for that. I'm trying to force myself to do actual videos instead of just relying on a weekly live stream. So obviously we start here on a funeral pyre and who, who could it be? It's not a very big pyre, but that's for a couple reasons. One, he wasn't very big. And the other is there ain't a lot left of him. He's in the mat. He's in the stomach of a dragon right now. So, Oh my God. I can never remember his damn name. Because they look so much alike. I can never remember if Jace is the one that died or if Luke is the one that died. And I know Sudden Hours is going to make fun of me for that. Okay, Luke. Lucerus Valerian. Well, Targaryen. Valerian, Targaryen, whichever one. Thank you. Thank you, Sundowners. 
So obviously it looks spotty. Uh, I guess they found something to burn. I uh, I don't really know what they would have found. Maybe they went to his room and took something. But I mean, most of him has got to be in the stomach of that fucking dragon. Vagar. Okay. So I don't really want to talk about like the dragons. There's so many of them and uh, we don't really like they all um some of them look different like uh uh sunfire it's sunfire isn't it uh sunnars that's supposed to be the most beautiful dragon of all time so we know which one that is you know we you know who vagar is he's so big but there's a bunch of the other ones that like there's three or four of them that are all kind of gray maybe a little bit of blue but they are they're similar in color a little bit. Um, but this is the this is the scene that I think I think this is the very important scene, and I'm a little surprised they put it in the trailer because I believe this is the scene with the dragon seeds. And if you don't know, if you haven't watched Sundowner's excellent video about the dragon seeds about three months ago, or mine. Uh, the dragon seeds were people that were not Targaryens that drove that rode dragons. They were, uh, most of them, uh, yeah, yeah, most of them were like poor people. They basically just like went around and said, Hey, we're trying to find people that can drive, that can fly our, uh, or ride our other dragons. Uh, step right up and see if you can do it. And if you can't, you're probably gonna die. A lot of people died trying to test it. But right here, I'm pretty sure this one's supposed to be Adam of Hull. I think a lot of people are going to like him. This is Ulf the White, I think. I talked to people about that. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking the whole white hair is supposed to mean he's Ulf the White. Son, are you saying so? Are you saying this is going to be Hugh Hammer or this is going to be Hugh Hammer? I'm going to wait to see what he says. Oh, you say the one of the rights, Hugh Hammer. I think it's Ulf the White. 100% purist, do that. He looks like a man at arms. He looks like a soldier. And that's what Ulf was. Um, but what kind of got me, and again, Sundarus knows more about this than I do, which is shocking for me to say. But I think the one up here at the top right is Nettles. And we had a bunch of reports at the, uh, like, two or three months ago that we weren't going to see Nettles in the show this season. Okay, yeah, Sundara says it's Hugh here on the right. Okay. I'll be changing that video. Uh... So, one thing that I think is kind of interesting, and I'll talk more about this in the uh, when we're done with the other trailer, but I think they show more in the green trailer. Um, the the blacks trailer, I think they use a lot of Rhaenyra to kind of remind us who's who is like the leader of this side, but the greens trailer I think shows more that's going to happen. Um, what I really oh, love though is this. We're back in winter, we're back in the north. This to me looks like a ranging to the north. Um, so we know that the way the wall works is you've got the wall right here, and then for it in the books, it's 300 feet. I, I don't remember if it's the same in the show. But in the books, 300 feet from the wall north, all the trees have been cut down. And the uh, the crows send, the Night's Watch, send people north of the wall all the time to cut down trees so that they don't grow back up. And I'm not sure if this is a ranging starting or a ranging ending. So... It does kind of look like, if you look, you know, 
back there in the you know in the foreground uh, not foreground background i guess um that the trees end which would tell me that the uh the wall is right there but you can't i don't see a wall King Viserys. but there's the wall right there i love this you've got jace here talking to actually you know what sundowners oh, damn i should have sent you the link this is funny because i don't think this looks like Creek and stark over here on the left i think he's talking to someone else because hang on Yeah. Um he's right for This is part of the problem of talking about a show like this all by yourself. One second, guys. Okay, yeah, no, that was... Men do not remember the oath sworn. To so, I friends. actually take that back. I do think he looks like him. Um, I had to I had to pull up the actor. Um, it's uh, Tom Taylor. It does, with uh, with darker hair, it does look a little like him. Um, I thought uh, right for that. this high tower down here. I love the way they do the armor here. And so... What's funny about this is I was watching, um, I've been watching a bunch of the Lord of the Rings uh, behind the scenes that Rob Meyer Burnett put together. Well, a, a whole crew put together. And one of the things, that, one of my favorite episodes, parts of the behind the scenes, uh, is Weta's, the Weta Workshop one, uh, led by Richard Taylor. Richard Taylor actually won an Oscar for his work on Return of the King. And the amount, the amount of detail and love that went into that movie, in, into those movies, and especially from what a workshop, you know, making characters look believable is such a huge part of fantasy. And if you don't have armor, if, if the armor is wrong, if you don't have uh, clothing or horses or swords, if... If it just doesn't look right, then you what you end up doing is you end up asking the viewer to suspend their disbelief even further, which isn't fair to the viewer. So when you get things like that Witcher show, Blood Origins, was that the name of it? Where everything looks like it just came out of the box. Everything looks brand new and pristine and the civilization that's supposed to be you know thousands of years old then you you ruin your show and what i love about this is this armor doesn't look brand new yeah it's kind of shiny yeah there's uh there's a lot of um gold that's obviously seen in the uh in the little inscription not inscriptions in the engravings but look at all you look at these dents here on the shoulder look at the scrapings up here this stuff looks like he's worn it. It doesn't look like he just picked it up off the shelf of whatever you know C plus studio they're using. Like it, do, it doesn't look anything like Rings of Power or The Witcher. And I think dedication like that is something that is one hundred percent required when you do fantasy. Uh, Burton snowboarding boots and Star Wars. I don't know what you're talking about. Burton's, yeah, yeah, I genuinely don't. Is, are we talking about a Hoth scene? Keep watching. Um, the high towers are marching. You must crush this beast. 
I love seeing Corliss in his act. I love seeing the sea snake there. I love seeing the half uh, serpent, half horse. I love that. I love that we're actually finally seeing this stuff. We see, if you look underneath his braids here, he's been named Hand of the Queen. Yeah, I didn't watch Andor. I, I don't watch Star Wars if it doesn't have the Force or lightsabers in it. It's not Star Wars, then. And Felicity, I love that you said that. So, th the success of House of the Dragon, the success of Game of Thrones, the success of, shit, Euphoria, and uh, all these other things that HBO does, just goes to show that that Netflix, uh, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, Peacock, Paramount+, Plus are trying to play in a league that they have no business playing in. Paramount Plus does a very good job with their Taylor Sheridan shows, for the most part. But they still don't touch Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon. They can't. They don't understand what it takes. This looks like Heron Hall to me. I cannot wait to see more of Heron Very Hall. Very simple. Renounce the... And there's a funeral. I'm not going to tell y'all what funeral it is, but hoo, hoo, hoo. get ready. Some of y'all may change your mind on uh, what side of this battle you're on. False King can bend the knee to the Or your house burns. Uh, Matt Smith was born to play David. Uh, let's see. Now, the only thing I have to say about this, left to say about this trailer is I'm so sick of Rainey's. Like, I, I didn't, I, I wasn't annoyed with her as much during the, um, during the first season until she didn't bend the knee. That pissed me off that she was the only one that didn't bow to the damn queen. It's like, I don't have to bow. I'm older than you. Fuck off and take a knee, bitch. Sorry, did that come out? Did I say that out loud? I didn't mean that. Let's look at the greens. For the one true king. I also want a green one. I also want a green version of this. I love the scaling on this. It looks, if I could find this thing, it would look beautiful in, on my wall. Many weeks ago, I lord. What is this? It's not Balerian's crypt thing. My husband was alive. It must be some sort of Temple of, of the Seven thing. So we see right here, Lars is going to make a return. The uh, uh, It could be the Sept, but it seems... I mean, I guess maybe there's seven... Maybe it's like a seven-starred... Yeah, I guess, you know, we see these little ridges right here. Maybe it's a seven-pointed star and the things are, you, know, you light the candle of whosoever point you're praying to, I guess. Oh, my Lord Husband I don't know, the alive. seven is weird. And the realm was at peace. I fucking hate Kristen Cole. I hate him so much. On his deathbed, he knew the realm would never accept the queen. Rhaenyra's supporters will believe what they wish. So, this is the big thing I want to talk about in the greens. Okay, watch Otto here. <laughs> Ot For me, Otto looks scared right here. I think... Uh, I think something's happened. I don't know if this is going to be... You know, let's say episode... So, something happens in episode one. It's going to be a big episode, okay? I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen. I don't want to ruin that. It would... It would one of the biggest things I hate is that the ES, the uh, the ESPN lady that ruined the Mountain versus the Viper for so many people. Um, I don't want to do that to anyone. So I'm not sure when this is. This could be at the beginning of episode one. It could be episode three, four, five, six, whatever. Uh, but Otto doesn't look happy. And I think that's kind of telling. 
Now, I don't remember anything about Otto ever changing sides. There are some people that change sides. I'll say that. Uh, I don't believe Otto's one of them. I'm pretty sure Otto, he put this whole thing in motion. Uh, unless Ryan Condal changes anything, there's no reason to have Otto do anything bad. He's the hand of the king right now. His son, his grandson's on the throne. He's won. He just has to, you know, win out the war. But he looks very disturbed about Aegon right now. And I'm I'm curious what this means. So if anyone was curious, the Sun Outers Club has been drinking tonight. Or smoking something. But Viserys wanted Aegon to succeed him. I do I do really hate that all of this is based on a mistake. Um, the book kind of makes it pretty clear that everyone was in on this. Everyone in the Greens was in on this. That So, uh, Felicity, I brought that up in the video. And I'll tell you the same thing now. I shouldn't, but I'll tell you the same thing now. I think it's going to be a bit of a reverse. I don't think Aegon, and I don't think the Aegon uh, Otto relationship is going to be the same as the Tywin Joffrey. I think it's going to be that Otto isn't able to control Aegon in the way that Tywin was able to control Joffrey. Um, but yeah, yeah, Sinners, that's exactly what you're talking about. Uh, so, Maria, the book is, uh, it's not rumor. It's more like uh, our history books. Our history books, for the most part, is a very good indication of what happened. But it is still true that the his that the victor writes the truth. And, it, you know, it's kind of one of the reasons why, you know, in your seventh grade history book, the Trail of Tears is really just a side note. Because it's not, it's not the point of that history book. You want to learn about the Trail of Tears? Go take a college class, or take your uh, upper level high school history classes. That kind of stuff. Um, but that's kind of what uh, Fire and Blood is. It's a, um, it's an, uh, what's the word? It's a narrator that you can't trust. Because what it is is it's the it's a maester that's just writing down the accounts from different people that were there. But the four people that he's taking the accounts from were black supporters. So it's already, there's already a bias there. So it's a bias on top of a bias, but it's an anti Targaryen bias on top of a pro black Targaryen bias. We got scorpions defending the Palisades. I love that. And then we have one of the twins. I'm going to really enjoy seeing the battle between the twins. We already know it happens. I'm not really spoiling anything there. Um, if you couldn't tell from that episode where they kind of break up uh, that there was going to be a fight, then, you, then you're an awesome person. Good for you. They wish now not for the good of the realm, but for the satisfaction of vengeance. Not against the... So, this is another thing. Okay. I am relatively sure that this is a gold cloak. The City's Watch of King's Landing. I'm relatively sure someone's paying their way to get into King's Landing. But, if it's not, if it's not King's Landing... Well, then where is it? There's two other people that wear gold, the Strongs and the Brathians. So if this is someone trying to buy their way into Heron Hall, which Lars should be the, um, uh, what's what's the thing? Should be the Lord of Heron Hall right now. Um, interesting. I don't really think it's anyone trying to buy their way into uh, Stormland, Storm's Landing because that it would have made any sense. Not they they the picked their side. Pay it back a hundred times over. I'm as fearsome as any of them. You have no idea the sacrifices that were made to put you on that throne. 
Aaron Hall. My uncle needs to challenge our uncle. I hate, so I hate this. I hate what he says here. If he does face me. Less than, you know, a month ago, you bitched out when he just looked at you funny. And now he's acting like he's so high and powerful. I think I think that's a mistake. And I think they've I think Aegon is overplaying his hand in this. <laughs> Where's the club foot? We didn't see any feet in the trailers. Man, that scene is still like the creepiest thing I've seen in all of Game of Thrones and uh House of the Dragon. That's I think that's still the most uncomfortable I've been. We will prevail in peace, but you must accept that the path to victory now is one of violence. I'm just gonna hand tell y'all, this is big. This is big. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but this is big. It's one of violence. Good. To war then. Rook's rest. I've endeavored to serve both my house and the realm. So this is another scene I saw. So I'm curious what this is going to be, because this to me looks Dornish over here, and I don't remember. Sundown is still in the chat. He can you know correct us, but I don't remember uh, the Dornish being part of this conflict. But this looks very Dornish. Maybe even Essos. Um, but like, this is, oh, what if this, no, it's not pretty enough. I was going to say, what if this is Starfall, but it's not pretty enough. Uh, Starfall is the seat of House Dane. That, oh my God, I would be so happy. On the realm. And somehow none of it matters. Hold to your courage for the one true king, Edgar. Cool looking dragon right there. Okay, so it's not Dorn. Yeah, see, I didn't think it was, but it looks a little Dornish to me. Um, I'm not really sure what that could have been. Uh, I don't, I don't have the whole thing in my head. I need to get back to having it because it's an awesome story. I used to know it all. Okay. Um, let's look at uh, what she at. Yeah, Felicity. I think. I think that was the point. So, if you read the book, well, the the two and a half, three chapters that the Dance of Dragon makes up in the book. Um. It is kind of, there it is very easy to be pro black or pro green. Now in the show, that first season, this is one of the things that uh my that the other advisor, Dan, uh hated about the show. That it was very obvious they were trying to make everyone pro black. And that's just not really what it was like in the book. It's it's very easy to be green or black. But I think I think they're going out of their way, both in the promotional material, especially in this the screen trailer. And I think the new season is going to make a lot of people kind of change their minds. I think there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, let's say three or four episodes in, you know, you're going to see, man, I was I was black all the way. Now them greens are starting to make a lot of sense. I think I think we're going to see a lot of that. Um, let's see, fell for her. I think that was the point. It's hundred percent, a hundred percent was the point. Um, okay. So, uh, there's some other stuff I want to talk about. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, hang on, I took a I took a picture of something I wanted to talk about. I need to find it.
Okay, let me see if I can find this on Twitter so I can share the whole thing. How's everyone doing tonight? Is your, you know, we're we're about halfway through the week. Everyone having a uh, everyone having a good week so far? Okay, here we go. So, for anyone that doesn't know, Sam Winkler. I'm not. I'm not going to share this because I don't want you know people harassing the guy. Uh, I just thought he brought up something I want to talk about. Sam Winkler is a writer for Borderlands. Borderlands Three. Borderlands Three was the worst rendition of Borderlands. It's not very good. It's boring. The writing's flat. It's a lot of copying stuff from the first three or four games. Um, It's just not, it was very badly done, but uh, he took Twitter to talk about the whole consultants in writing and stuff. And so I want to talk about this now, sweet baby ink, which is what all of this is coming from. uh, I think it's fair to say, and I know Marie's going to disagree with me, but I think it's fair to say that sweet baby ink has, a hand in ruining a lot of games. Uh, it is, it is startling to find so many games connected to them that all share very similar tones, very similar ideas, and very similar uh, shove it in your face things. Um, uh, Murray, I'll get to what I think you're going to disagree with me with. I'm not saying you disagree with me on this this exact point, but I think you're going to disagree with me down the road. Um, so Sam says, I see, uh, okay. So he says, I see this argument. So let me read the argument real quick. A good narrative writer of any skin color can write a good character with any, with another skin color without needing consultants. If your studio can't do that, get a better writer. I think that is most of the time true. I think for the most part, Anyone that is a good writer can write a good character depend, dependent on sex or race. I don't think I don't think they need if, if you have if you know if uh, if you only write white men and you your next book has a black female in it, then you may need to take a second and say, okay, this character is going to be a little bit different. How do I need to make them a little different? What changes do I need to make to my normal character layout? But if you're a good writer, you should be able to do that. You should be, whether it's through research or just, you know, ability, you should be able to do that. So he says, I see this argument all the time against DEI consultancy. And it just highlights the total misunderstanding of what being a good writer is. You don't somehow max out your stats and learn how to write every conceivable character, plot, or pro style. I love, so I, I disagree with him on a lot of things that he says. But I love that he uses, like, a video game thing in his argument. I thought that was really clever. Um, But knowing you can't, aren't ready, or aren't the right person to write something is one of the chief skills for a pro writer. Ideally, you have a team that can cover all your your bases, but if you have a gap, you hire an outside expert, just like in literally any effing other industry. Just further evidence that 99.99% of people spewing this shit have never created a single thing in their lives that they're proud of, and the rest are just straight up bigots. Um, it's a poorly worded sentence because what he's basically saying is a hundred percent of people saying this don't know anything. Uh, 
But let, there are two examples of why he's basically right about this. Uh, hang on. The gold cloak you talked about was blood. Um, are you sure about that? Hang on a second, guys. He shouldn't be in a gold cloak at that point, though. That's that's the problem with him being blood. He shouldn't be in a gold cloak because he gets kicked out. Doesn't he get kicked out before? Oh, my gosh. Raider! Doesn't even say they at least say something, buddy. Let's talk about hell divers for a second. Talk do you do you like that uh the arc weapons are working again? Say something. Ugh. Don't say a damn word. I love you, man. We need to play again soon. I had a lot of fun the other night. Um, yeah. So, okay. So I, I'm putting a pin in that thing real quick. Um, <laughs> Raider just bought Caleb's month of corn. I don't. Oh my god. Damio. I know you didn't mean corn. Don't be a dick. Pardon the pun. Shadowy, benevolent benefactor. He is quite the shadowy, benevolent character. Um, okay, let's rewind. Let's go back to the Sam Winkler thing. Uh, Sundowners, I'll talk to you about that later. Uh, so, two examples of why he's right about that. Uh Mark Scorsese was supposed to direct Schindler's List. And he was going to. And he decided not to. And he, and he said in several interviews that he decided not to because he didn't know what it meant. He didn't know what Oscar Schindler's story truly meant to the Jewish people. And that's why he didn't do it. That's why Steven Spielberg did, needed to do it. Because Steven knew what it meant. Another example is the movie Fences. That... Uh, uh, Denzel Washington starred in and directed, and I think had a hand in the writing. And there were people, he he has an interview, and I'm I'm actually going to see if I can pull it up because I don't think it's fair for me to try and say what he said. Um, I want to I want him to actually say it because it's a very good interview and it makes a very good point. Um, Denzel Washington. Uh, this might be it. Let me check. Hang on. All right. So this isn't quite the one that I'm talking about, but it's still kind of uh, 
brings the point about around. Uh, so let me share this. Uh, this isn't mine. This is uh, from All Hip Hop TV. Uh, let's watch this real quick. Felicity, what the heck? Come on! Ah, oh, shit. Are you serious? I'm. This shit is pissing me off. Okay, let me. This is like the third time it hasn't worked, and this, but it it keeps working, and then it doesn't work. So I'm gonna share full screen this time, and hopefully this works. Can you talk about African-American men and how this movie speaks to them? Pain is passed down from father to son and son to son. A lot of pain in Troy's life is a result of the pain and the damage from his father that he then visits on his son. We have to, as black men, be mindful of that. Sometimes it's unfair and sometimes we take it out on those we love. And, and I'm, 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 I'm guilty of that frustration that we all have but we have a responsibility and a duty to be fathers, not to just make babies, but to be real fathers. And you can't expect any good to come to you if you don't visit any good on your son or your daughter. So be a man. So I play that. It's not quite the interview I was looking for. Uh, there's another one out there about this movie. And he, what he basically, what he basically kind of says is, the same thing that um, Scorsese said about uh, trying to direct um, Schindler's List. But there is a... Bro, you got to chill, man. I have a message from you saying you didn't want to do anything tonight. So hush up, sit down, and enjoy the show. <laughs> So, uh, the interview that I was looking for, like I was saying, is a lot like what uh, Scorsese was saying about trying to direct Schindler's List. But the point that that interview right there says is, I can sit here and understand what it's like to be me and have my dad angry at me. But I can't understand what it's like to be uh, a young black kid in... I th I swear the movie takes place in like the 70s. So I can't understand what it's like to be that age, that race in 1970 with a father that went through, you know, the 40s and 50s and have that, have uh, a dad yelling at you like that. I can understand what it's like to be me and have my dad yell at me about something. But I don't think I could go and direct a movie, say, that shows that level of anger or that connection of anger from a different source other than just he didn't clean his room. So there is definitely a case of um, not being able to understand everything about a situation. But these video games are not Hollywood movies about the Holocaust and the relationship with it between a black father and his black son. These are video games about driving or a world that doesn't exist in a galaxy that doesn't exist. That's where the hypocrisy comes. That's where the sensationalism and the stupidity of saying you need to understand everything about this so that you can write this video game. And if you don't, you have to hire people that do understand it. Because you know what? It's not very hard 
I'm going to use Assassin's Creed here. It's not very hard to go read a fucking book or watch a fucking TV show about Vikings and get a clue about, hey, maybe life as a Viking might have been like this. Like, that's not hard. You don't need a, uh, a consultant to come in and say, Vikings did this, so we need everything to look like this. You don't need that. Open the history book. It's it's all right there. Go to a museum. It's all right there. You don't need it. You don't need a consultant for that. You don't need a consultant for, for a driving game so where they can correct your script because you use too many he's or hers. Don't need it. And that's what pisses people off. It's not that when you have a story that has that takes place in a certain area that you need people that understand what that area is like. It's the fact that the video games don't take place in that area. And so you don't need someone to understand what that's like. And yet you still tell that video game company they need these people. It's because you're trying to justify putting your crap in other people's entertainment because you want to feel better about yourself. That's what that is. And that's why people are get pissed off. That's why Hell Divers has zero shit to do with being gay, straight, or bisexual. There is nothing to do with it. Yet, you've got bots and all sorts of people scrambling all over the entire forums, whether it's Steam Forum, whether it's different websites, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, about Hell Divers saying, hey, we want gay pride flags for our capes. We want transgender. We want this. We want this. Somebody did something saying they want the zoophilia shit in uh as a flag option, as a cape option. And they're all pissed off because this Arrowhead CEO said, no, we're not, this has nothing to do with politics. We're not bringing political stuff into this game. And people are angry. Why? It has zero to do with sexuality. There's absolutely, there's not a damn thing in that game that has anything, except for the fact that they did tell us we weren't allowed to have sex anymore because we did fail a mission, which was really funny. I digress. The fact that you've got people trying to shoehorn the the one thing about themselves that, that they think makes them interesting. Uh, yeah. They don't have a very long way to drive. Um, there's a facility really close to him over at Eagles Pass. Damn I mean, if you want to hop on and talk about any of this, text me. I'll, send, I'll shoot you the link. Stop being cry, baby. Okay, what was I saying? Um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, hell divers. The fact that you've got people who just want to see their thing included in everything. I'm not asking them to put American flags or South Carolina flags or Gamecock flags. I don't want them to put uh, flags in this game because that ruins the idea of super earth. That ruins the idea that we're all one thing trying to fight against these other people. It, sometimes inclusion is a bad thing. Uh, um, yep. Yeah, so think I'm done for the night unless uh, our little crybaby actually wants to pop in. Ah, the crybaby has arrived. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> You're muted. I can't hear you. Take you out. All right. Uh, He'll he'll return. Ice must have like been interfering with this shit. Uh, 
So yeah, um, uh, while he fixes that stuff, let me talk to Shundowners about this. So he's wearing, and let me pull it back up. Uh, this was the green trailer, right? Trailer. Oh, wrong button. So, Senators, my only issue is so if this is blood. We don't, we don't have to talk about what blood does. Um, he shouldn't be wearing his gold cape because he shouldn't be a member of the, of the city watch anymore. He gets, uh, he gets fired for, uh, like beating the crap out of that lady. I, I don't think this is blood. Um, again, I mean, the you're a little more plugged in than I am, but is this back? Yes, there he is. What just happened? What's up, dude? Not much, crybaby. Uh, you didn't have to send me the link. I was trolling you the whole time. Well, don't worry, worry. So, uh, I mean, I can talk about everything. <laughs> so, what's up? Not much, man. Um, no, actually, did you pull me in for any reason, or did you send me the link? Well. I was curious to see if you had any thoughts on any of the stuff that I talked about tonight. Really, the only thing I wanted to talk about—I mean, okay, the, the I thought the green and the blacks trailer were good, I, but you already know I didn't read the books, um, so yeah. I can't really talk too much on that. Um, but I thought they were good. I I really enjoyed them. I'm pr pretty excited for them. Um, no, I actually was. I got Caleb knows. I texted. I know. I, we were yeah. texting earlier. Um, <laughs> Uh, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, the pirates. That was really the only thing because uh, I had done a video on it and we we've talked about it extensively. Um, but yeah, I think it's just the biggest mistake that they possibly mm -hmm. could have made. Yeah. Like, and I I think it's still uh, I think it's still the case that like they're gonna tie in Johnny Depp to the story, but they're gonna have Io. Um, Ed Beery be the lead. I think there's yeah. still, I think nothing else has changed on that. Um, just, I don't know, man. I think it's a really poor mistake, right? Like, yeah, I, it's dumb. It's you, you remove the character that the majority of people are there to watch from your story. It's kind of like if, uh, you know, you're making Lord of the Rings and all of a sudden you go, you know what? Let's, uh, we don't need Aragorn in this anymore. We can just, you know, he can go finish the battle of, uh, uh, I almost said White Harbor, the battle of Helm's Deep, and uh, be done. We don't need him. We well, can just focus on Frodo. The what funniest, the, the funniest part is like, um, you know, I'm sure Io Adbury is going to do a fine job in terms of acting with whatever like script they give her because mm -hmm. she did pretty well in in the book. But it's like not if she's a black and Bonnie. That's where I was going. Like, it's supposed to be, um, and she's from Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. And Bonnie, yeah, and <laughs> and Iron Man, Ireland may look a certain way today uh, in 2024, but in in 1695, when Anne Bonnie was sailing the seas, Ireland looked a certain way. Yeah, and <laughs> it didn't look that way. She I had didn't your, say anything. She had your tone of skin. Let's just say that. It might have been even wider than me. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, that's all, man. Um, yeah, actually, though, I thought uh, thought you were just going to go solo, and then I saw you drop the link. <laughs> well, yeah, I I was just curious. I, I thought you might have had something to add. I know you're you're a relatively big Scorsese guy, so I thought you might have had something to add about what I was saying about that as well. Uh, to be honest, I kind of missed out. We we're I had to mute it because we were playing the game during that uh, uh, segment. Uh, so this, uh, let, me, let me get off what Felicity says. I wonder if this pro production process is contractual since Margot Robbie was attached at one point. There's no reason for the Pirates movie to be made right now. Totally, 100%, no reason. Um, contractually, 
Probably not. Um, service con- services contracts, which is what this would be, are a weird animal where some of them are enforceable, some of them aren't. Uh, if it's written this way, it's enforceable. It's the kind of thing where, uh, you know, a, a um, an NFL contract is a services contract. But you can't sue and go force someone to play football. You, it doesn't work that way. That's why every now and then you get these big guys that's, that uh, hold out. And like uh, Le'Veon Bell, who held out for the entire season. The Steelers couldn't sue him and force him to complete the contract. Which to me is a little silly. I feel like they ought to be able to, but so to go back to what you're talking about with, uh, or were you done, or did I cut you? Off? Yeah, yeah. So I, I finished that. I wanted to read you the. So this was the. Um, you know who Sam Winkler is the Borderlands three writer. Mm-hmm. Bell. Froze there a little bit. Oh, there we go. Uh, so. He was he was kind of arguing the whole um, consultants DEI uh, sweet baby ink thing. Mm-hmm. It's like you know if um, it doesn't matter how good a writer you are if you don't you don't somehow max out your stats and learn how to write every conceivable character plot or pro style. Which I, I I was saying I really did enjoy how he used like a video game theme in his argument. I thought this was kind of clever. Yeah. Uh, but he's talking about how. You know, if you don't understand a certain thing or a certain character that's going to be in your story, you need to go find someone that does understand that character. And he's he's leaning into the whole, you know, a white person doesn't necessarily understand what a black person is going to go through, so you need a black person to help you write that character. Um, and I was talking about how, you know, Scorsese was originally supposed to direct uh, Schindler's List, but he decided mm-hmm. that he didn't understand the Holocaust enough to direct that movie. Um, and then with the thing with Denzel and Fences, where you know, uh, there were a bunch of people that asked him on different interviews. Basically, uh, the one that I was trying to find, but I couldn't, was someone asked him, Could a white person have directed this movie? And he goes, Sure, sure, yeah, I know anyone could have directed this movie, but I think it's gonna, I think the main story came out differently because a black person directed it. Because a black person knows, I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for this from YouTube. But someone that grew up with that kind of father knows more about directing that kind of movie and trying to pull out that story from those actors than someone that's just a director. So I think um, I think the, the biggest thing to take from this is that it really depends on the story and the character that you're trying to write. And um, like if you just have a black character, like it has nothing to do with their race or their past, then doesn't really matter who directs it or writes it, mm-hmm. right? But when you're doing something like, okay, if you're going to cover the, the Black Panther stuff, you should probably get someone that like either had family members that were tied to that situation mm-hmm. or whatever, has a direct connection to it to pull off like a good story. Now, um, I think something with, I, I, and that could actually be argued, arguably the, the same um it could go the same way with like if you're doing the Holocaust, but I, I think there are plenty of good like world. There's so much history in writing with World War II that it's mm-hmm. a little different in that sense. Um, and if you're trying to write a direct story about uh, specific Holocaust survivors, you should probably like get someone that actually understands it and is connected to it um, in real in reality, right? In, in real mm-hmm. life, like to pull off the best kind of to show the the most realistic emotion with that and you know i just i don't know i think i think it really just depends on the story or the movie that you're trying yeah. to and that and that was one of the other points i made that all of that i'm relatively good with with your hollywood movie that you're making about something that happened but mm-hmm. then when you take all of that and you say okay that's necessary now in our video game about a fake world with fake people that never existed, don't exist, will never exist, uh, that you have people that look like, uh, that are, you know, 30 feet tall with tiny ass limbs that have bones for heads. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't reality. You don't need, video games don't need to be reality. 
It's I like agree. what John Lester said. It's not about realism. It's about believability. And, yeah. and that's one of the problems with uh, that I think a lot of people have with these things is that you have these companies that are saying, oh, your, your character is going to have black skin. Well, then that character needs to be written by someone that knows what it's like to be black in America. Why? The, the game doesn't take place in America. The game takes place on Epsilon 34 uh, in the Zargan galaxy with Sheila as the god emperor. Why, why, does, why does she need... I love how I just went from like this little thing that kind of happens to this weird little thing over here. Um, why, why, does, why does the character need to know need to be written by someone that knows what it's like to be in America? That doesn't make any sense. Well, I, I, think, I think that's where the breakdown is happening. I mean, and also, okay, so like Spielberg, obviously he's he's Jewish based off the last name and stuff. Uh, but like Tom Hanks, like he had a big part in um, Saving Private Ryan. Like that, yep. they did a fine job with that movie mm -hmm. and with the topic of it. I just I don't feel like unless you're writing a specific story, like you don't really need to be connected directly right. to that race or that history. Which um, is which is why I I thought Fences is a good example, and what and Denzel and I, it's why I kind of wish I'd been able to find that interview, because Denzel does a very good job of basically saying that that anyone there's a lot of people that could direct this movie and make a very good movie. You know, I yeah. Uh, no, we were you were in chat with me. Uh, me jim and and rob and like halfway through your stream rob was like oh i found that interview caleb was talking about <laughs> <laughs> but they're playing beautiful there, yeah beautiful couldn't, couldn't send it to you but, uh, was... but yeah there's you know in this interview yeah he goes there's a lot of people that can make this movie and do a very good job but mm -hmm. i think that having the experience that i have growing up in this kind of house that i was trying to base the movie on uh, has allowed me to make the movie deeper and mean more to someone like me. Mm. And yeah, sure. A hundred percent. I agree with you. Uh, but I think that's, I think that's the problem that people are having in this world is they can't see that this is different from this. Yeah. And yeah. the two, you, you don't need what you need for this to do this. This can be done by itself. You don't need consultants and stuff to write a good video game. Okay, character. I think based off of what we were just talking about right now, like there's almost a fear, and so certain directors of certain color are going to be like, "Well, I just like I don't know if I am allowed to write about this." You know, I think there's. Oh, you mean kind of how like eight minutes ago I said I think I'm going to get in trouble from YouTube for saying this? Yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't know. yeah. Um, well, it's a fear created by. Uh, people above you having power to do stuff uh, half-assed and arbitrarily. So if you don't mind me uh, switching gears for a second and hijacking this, uh, I want your opinion on, did you watch the uh, the Godfather movies? And uh, Yeah, I mean, a long time ago. Uh, did you like like I, I, I enjoyed what I watched when I was 10. I don't really remember them. Like I remember mm -hmm. the horse. I remember the um uh oh there's that one scene in three with what's her name. But there dude, there's so much about those movies I don't remember. I watched Goodfellas like two years ago and I I, I don't remember half of Goodfellas. Well he also did Apocalypse Now, right? The yep. same um so I know we talked no, about this. No, no, no. Oh, Wait. yes, 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 yes. He yes, did, he did. He did. Yeah, Francis yeah. Coppola. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he, where I'm going, where I wanted to connect this to was you said Scorsese. Uh, you were talking about Scorsese and yeah. what, what I thought. I liked his earlier movies. Uh, I think he's got, you know. A lot of these kinda, people, a lot kinda, of these people have fallen off. Arrogantly long, right? That's how all these old directors are going to be. I love that phrase, dude. <laughs> but, like, yeah, they are, right? Like, they're getting to this age where, like, they, they feel like they can just put out a four-hour movie and without any complaints. Um, 100%. So where, where I'm connecting this to is that, like, I actually don't think Scorsese or Ridley Scott are a fraction of what they used to be. And oh, 100%. I'm a little nervous because this movie, um, uh, Megalopolis, sounds pretty good but francis coppola has been out of the game for a long time 
and then he's also in the same age range. Uh, I don't know if you look much into Megalopolis, but it I have not no. So the thing is, I've I've heard you talk about it a couple times. It just doesn't sound like what I want to watch, especially if this is going to end up being an arrogantly long. Well, run. and that's where I was going with it. So it's like I'm. First of all, I'm super into like dystopian settings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, obviously, we we both love sci-fi, and it's kind of like a blend between the two. But like, and the cast is crazy. We were looking at the cast the other night uh, together, yeah. and um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of wanted your your general thoughts on what you felt. It sounds like you're not like too hyped for it. So, I am not a huge. Uh, what's his name again? Francis Coppola. I'm not a huge Francis Coppola guy. Yeah. Um, I know that he has done amazing movies. Yeah. But I'm also someone that doesn't really think just because you've done amazing movies means you can always do amazing movies. Uh, a great example is Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson <laughs> did an incredible job on Lord thank of the you. Rings. Yeah, thank you. Peter Jackson's uh, King Kong is not a great movie. Well, careful. Great pilgrims in chat. He might. Yeah. He the might Hobbit. The Hobbits are not a great movie. That, they are not nec- fine. That's not necessarily his fault. The Hobbit. Right. Right. It, that, that is a thing. That's kind of like a, you got, you got to take the Hobbit and put it over here and explain. <laughs> but King Kong, not a great movie. Can, Mor- can you- Mortal Engines, not a great movie. Can you highlight uh, Felicity's last chat? That, that's pretty much where I'm at, Felicity. Mm-hmm. Like. Now, let's talk about... Hold up. That is a wild picture. Uh, let's talk about this cast. So, Gina Carl... Gene Carl... I can never say his first name. John Carlo Esp- John Carlo? Okay. Okay, I would not go with that. I, I would say G uh, and Carlo. Yeah, yeah, it's John, John Carlo. Carlo Esposito, Catherine Hunter, who I cannot place. Um, uh, oh shit, she played the uh, the squib in uh, Order of the Phoenix. She was the old God. lady. Are you looking the at the old, cast? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She was the old lady that was the witness in so, Order of the Phoenix. There are a lot uh, of unknown. There are a lot of unknowns, but like there are also a yeah, lot. There's, of yeah, there's yeah. Aubrey Plaza, Adam Driver, Shia LaBeouf, Dustin Hoffman, Jason Schwartzman, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne, John yeah. Voight, DB Sweeney. It's yeah, a huge cast. Um, and th- the weirdest part <laughs> of all of this. Grace Vanderwall, who fucking won like America's Got Talent in like 2013, and she's the she's the main character pretty much. Like, what, what the fuck? Yeah. How do you go from being the sweet little girl with the ukulele to the lead in a fucking uh, what's his name movie? A Francis Coppola movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's so it's, weird. It's, but it's like to what you have highlighted right now, like the Megalop. Like I want it to be good too, but and I've been actually following this movie since it got announced before COVID. First of all, like it's taking a well because it's again it, they he's been working on this even longer, Dude, right? I, I didn't think this movie was gonna even get filmed, and I don't even th- I don't remember an announcement being made that it was starting to be filmed. He okay. I don't know if Felicity already read what I read, but like, yeah, that's I like. Just, legitimately, I do know. I do know. Sold, Coppola has he sold his? Had, he sold uh, his winery. Yeah, he sold I, his vineyard. Yeah, so I do know that he did. He has a private wine collection, or had a private wine collection that was wow. worth that had Dude, some models in it. My dad. My dad's a wine guy. Uh-huh. Like. Wine people keep their bottles, but he had a vineyard. He's like, I'll keep yeah. the bottles that are like probably tens of thousands of dollars. I'll keep those, but I'm going to sell my vineyard because I can always just rebuild the vineyard later, yeah. you know, or rebuy it. But like, yeah, I, I, I can't tell if she's being uh, uh, facetious or not, uh, but like, <laughs> I think – I think she is, um, but yeah, it's I he he legitimately sold a vineyard to to make this movie. 
I hope it's good, but like, yeah, I'm but not. Do we do we have that. any idea of a, so the IMDb has it has the tie has the um, uh, definition as an architect wants to rebuild New York City as a utopia following a de- following a devastating disaster. Do we have like a runtime? Do we have any idea? Uh, honestly, I, dude, I would guess in the ballpark of three and a half to four hours. But... Yeah, this. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking I'm looking at this one photo and let me share this. This makes me think that he's going to have some like grand one percent of the one percent uh, party scenes that are going to be like you know, 45 minutes long. Like there are going to be things in this and then, you know, it's just cast photos. Apparently Adam driver smokes in the movie, at least. Um, Was it St. Patty's day? Appears to be. There's a lot of green in that. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. Yeah. Look, she's wearing a, Green, yeah, they must have just uh, yeah, they must have just left the St. Patty's Day parade. Is that her? Is venerable? No, it's that, Isabella uh, Kuzman. But this, I just think this is going to be a crazy movie. Is are these set photos? Um, I think what? so. Dude, what? Okay, okay. Pause is that there. John Voight? Holy shit, he looks like crap. Yeah, he looks super old. But holy so, fuck! So his character is apparently. Oh no no no! Uh, Adam Driver's character is yeah exactly Felicity. <laughs> it's gonna be at least three hours. Three. I, that's why I'm saying in the ballpark of three to four. Uh, apparently this movie. Bro. It, so like, so uh, Shia Buff plays her gay gigolo, huh? I guess so. Um, what the fuck is what? I wish I had that clip. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, oh this apparently God. Adam Driver Adam Driver's character is a mix between Francis Coppola, which self insert obvious, and um, Caesar, like the Caesar. So like he's basing this a lot about the um, the Roman Empire in a future dystopian setting, but. If these are the set photos, I'm a little so, thrown off already. So here's a question. You know, with the chairs you got at Hollywood, you know, you got director on the back. Mm-hmm. Why does he need his full name on the front? Why does uh, he say Francis Coppola? Oh, I mean, I think he's known more as Francis Ford. Is he? Coppola. Okay. Yeah. But that's like, fine. what. what's weird about that is, um, I, I definitely know why you've got a name on the front, because, you know, sometimes uh, the person, you know, you don't want them to have to look in the back, to see if you can sit there. But and I noticed that I was, when I was watching uh, some of the uh, behind-the-scenes stuff for uh, Lord of the Rings, and Peter Jackson has you know Peter Jackson on the, on the chair. I was just remember thinking, why, why is your name on your chair, dude? It <laughs> says director. Why why did you do your name on it? Uh, but yeah, this just looks. I tell you what, I I get a lot of ads for fucking tampons and pads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. This okay. His his yeah. His co- yeah. His uh his costumes throwing me off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell is that? Ha. Jim says it's break time. What's up? <laughs> uh, Felicity. Yeah, I I would be. I am too, Felicity. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I. I when it first got announced, I was looking forward to it, but yeah, some of uh, some of the stuff now that we're seeing, I'm like, ooh. It is. Uh, there's another one. Fucking hell. 
Okay, we can stop sharing and figure out what the fuck IMDb is thinking about me. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, I think that's it. I know uh, somebody wanted to come say hi. So I'll let them come in and say hi. But I don't really have anything else to talk about. Um, oh, did you see the uh, the Lord of the Rings thing I posted in Discord earlier? I did not. Uh, your server, right? Yeah, new game. So this, I think you actually have something to say about. Like, why can't they just give us a a game that we want to actually play. Apparently, this game's going to be about uh, uh, the Shire and the peaceful life you live in the Shire as a hobbit. <laughs> like, what is... I mean, dude... Mm, I'm fair, a... I, don't, I don't necessarily hate that. What I hate is this game looks lame okay. as shit. So, we had, we had the... Uh, what's it called? Gollum game? Gollum. Mm -hmm. And we had the... Uh, the Moria game. Yes, the Moria game. Yep. And now we're getting um, a Shire game. Tell, don't pretend for one second that you wouldn't much rather be playing as a knight of Gondor. Um, uh, of any of the elf. Uh, I, you know I'm not. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. I agree with you. Yeah. But what I will say if is, you know, a $30 game – where you get to, you know, play around as a hobbit and uh, do stuff, I don't think is a terrible idea, but you are right. Someone yeah. needs to be sitting there at uh, Warner uh, Studios saying, hey, let's make a video game about the War of the North. Let's make a video game where you can play as a man and kill well, orcs. Well, and this is what I'm trying to say. It's like, this game wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be as negative about this game if they had given us a game as what I'm talking about at, in the same year. But, like, this is three games in a row where I have zero interest in playing as them, mm -hmm. right? Like Now, the, and so this is the thing that's kind of annoying about that Moria game, is it is a very interesting idea. It is an idea that could have worked really well. The problem is they went too far into the crafting. They made it a little too Minecrafty. And then it doesn't look good. Like you look at the fucking combat, it looks like a uh, a Game Boy game almost. Mm. Like there's purple magic popping out when you get to throw something at a at a uh, troll. It just it didn't look good. Um, the Moria game could have had a like if it was like I don't I don't know if you were a big but fan. like look at this look at this okay. Uh, this game is coming out in, let's say, 2025. Probably. I, I doubt it comes out this year. Mm -hmm. um, sea of Thieves came out in 2018. Look at the water. Sea of Thieves? Actually, I think the water is the best looking part about this game, other than the wood. The water up here? The uh, No, 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 no. I, I mean, right, like... Uh, like well, down here in yeah. the marsh. Okay, yeah, you, I give that to you. But, like, you're, this looks you're right, you're right. dumb as shit. And uh, then we got little things over here flying the trees look dumb uh, no nah, I, I agree dude um i agree this also doesn't make any sense so this looks like it's a uh another hobbit hole up here you didn't have hobbit holes that had multi stories because you couldn't support there wasn't enough room to support the thing that's why hobbit holes are actually kind of small that's what makes bag in so impressive and why the bagginses are so rich because mm -hmm. they have the biggest hobbit hole mm -hmm. yeah man i just i don't know i thought this one would be funny for you to bring up um but yeah didn't really uh plan on coming in i think i'm gonna hop out now i appreciate you bringing me in uh good stream man you, you do pretty good with the monologue. I will tell you that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to get better at that. Yeah, um, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, you kept it engaging. I was listening for most of it. Um, but anyway. Bye, but chat. also, you What's were that? spreading democracy. I was. I was playing games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I'll talk to you in a bit. Yep. Yeah, see you, dude.
Well, everyone, thank you so much for coming. I hope you all had fun. Raider, thank you so much. Felicity, Pilgrim, Risk It, Maria, I feel like I kind of threw stuff at you. I'm sorry about that. I love talking to you about this stuff. Sundowners, John, the great John Graber was in chat. I hope you're feeling better, man. Be a man. Get through it. You got this. And, of course, Rogue Sarge, I hope you're doing better. I know that happened. Who get, Don't worry about it anymore. Who gives a shit? All in words and upwards. And Crimson Law, thank you so much. And RG Energy. I forgot about RG Energy. Thank you for stopping by. I hope everyone had fun. I hope you have a, a great rest of your week. Uh, see you next time. Hey!